Okay, the next thing to talk about, since we were on the subject of fluorescent lighting earlier, and here's a fixture complete, uh, are ballasts. Because a fluorescent lamp, or any, any discharge source, mercury vapor, sodium, neon, metal halide, they all require ballast because when current passes through mercury vapor, mercury vapor is such a good conductor of electricity that the, if the lamp were connected directly to the power source, it would, as it warmed up, it would draw more and more current as more mercury vaporized until eventually it would act almost like a short circuit. Chances are it would destroy the lamp. So the lamp cannot operate directly off of it, off of the AC line. It has to have a current limiter. It also has to have something that can supply a high voltage spike to start the lamp, which is also important, and supply the proper current to preheat the cathodes. So a ballast does three things. Here we have a ballast. This one is from the 1940s that I took all the tar out of because ballasts are filled with tar to make them run quieter and also to help dissipate heat. And this model is to run two four foot 40 watt lamps and you can see what all's inside of a typical fluorescent ballast. Here's your transformer section. You've got a step up transformer on here, which steps 120 volts up to about 200 volts, to run actually about 216 volts, to supply enough voltage to run the lamps. Then you have two reactors, one for each lamp. That's what actually limits the current to the lamps so they can't get too much current. They're called chokes. And then there's a third winding called a starting compensator, which I won't go into right now. And that's necessary for starting of one of the two lamps. You got a capacitor, which, which raises the power factor of the ballast. In other words, makes it draw less line amps because the capacitor modifies the characteristics of the ballast. It's kind of complicated, so I won't go into it in great detail. But this particular model has a capacitor. And this is in series with one of the two lamps that it operates. So basically a ballast is, is a type of transformer combined with a current limiter. On the smaller fluorescents like this one, you have a simpler ballast. And this is it. This is what runs this lamp. It's a simple choke ballast, just like what's in the big ballast, except it doesn't need a step-up transformer and it doesn't use a capacitor. So all it has is just a choke in series with the lamp. And this does everything. It limits the current to the lamp, so it can't get too much current. It provides the inductive kick to start the lamp, and it limits the current through the cathodes during preheat. So this ballast does three things all in one little unit. And it's just a simple little coil with two wires in series with the lamp. Here we have some other formats. This is a ballast from, from the early 1940s, early to mid 1940s. This one's called a long john ballast or a thin section ballast. This one runs two 40 watt fluorescent lamps as well, four foot lamps, but it's long and narrow. And the reason for it was some of the light fixtures in that era were really streamlined and really thin. And the area where the ballast mount in the center, the, the trough where the ballast go was very narrow and thin. So they had to make a long skinny ballast in order to fit into that space. These type are actually getting hard to find these days because they don't make them anymore. And this particular model is just like the one I showed the innards of, but complete. And this is the most typical ballast that was used right up into the early 50s. Preheat for 240 watt fluorescent lamps, four footers. And this one's made by Westinghouse, which is a nice feature. You don't see as many Westinghouse ballasts. But this is what's known as a brick ballast. And you can see why, because it's big and heavy and it weighs about eight pounds. Occasionally when these ballasts get old, the windings will short out inside and they'll start to overheat and they'll start to smoke and they'll start to leak tar. And you know, in a few rare cases, they can even catch fire if, 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 if the failure mode is ignored and the light is left on. The ballast can completely burn up and start a fire. It's rare though. It, it's really kind of rare considering how many ballasts are in use. But I've seen many of these overheat and start to smoke at the end of their life. The smoke is coming from one of these windings burning up inside the ballast. 
they don't all just burn up like that. If they're well cared for, they'll last a lifetime. And then as time progressed, they got smaller. This is a two lamp for two four foot lamps as well, 40 watt, rapid start ballast. And this particular case design is what they're using today, even on the new electronic ballasts are pretty much the same case style. And uh, this ballast is what replaced the old ballast, but this one doesn't need starters. The older ones needed starters, where the newer ones don't. It's called rapid start. It'll start the lamps without starters. It uses a combination of high voltage and constant cathode preheat, but it also has a lot more wires to hook up, so that's one of the disadvantages. Plus, these aren't as reliable as the old preheat ones. In fact, anyone that has these old preheat lights in use should keep them because they're really good lights. They're really dependable. Okay, on the subject of ballasts, I have a big, twisty, compact fluorescent bulb here, and this one shows pretty much how a modern electronic ballast is done. It's just a, just a printed circuit board with a transformer. This is what actually runs the lamp. Some transistors, which make an inverter circuit to invert 60 hertz AC to a high frequency AC to run the fluorescent lamp. Some capacitors and resistors and diodes as part of the circuit. Pretty simple device. You know, it's not that comp complex as electronic circuits go. And it's a rapid start circuit, which is the same as the rapid start magnetic ballast I have here. But you can see it's much more compact. And this is for the compact fluorescent, so it's made round. And where a ballast, its efficiency is judged by how much losses it has. Because the ballast has to limit the current to the lamp. And in doing so, some of the energy has to be lost in the ballast. It's just the laws of physics. So... The losses of a ballast are expressed in watts. For example, a two lamp ballast like this one, preheat one, will lose about maybe 15 watts of power to run two 40 watt lamps. So that ends up being about 85 watts or so of, of, of total current consumption for the two lamps and ballast. Now on this ballast, it's the same idea. It's electronic, it's a little more efficient to run the lamp at high frequency over, over standard 60 cycle frequency, but the only efficiency boost comes in the lamp itself, not the ballast. The ballast still has losses. This one on this, on this big CFL probably loses at least 10 watts. But one thing the, the old magnetic ballast has that the electronic ballast does not, the old magnetic ballast will last 50 years if it's cared for. The new electronic ballast will only last the lifetime of this lamp. And the ones that run the straight tubes in this kind of a case, if they last five years, they're doing good. When an old magnetic burns out, you can recycle it easily as scrap metal. When these burn out, yeah, they may take it as electronic scrap at, at a junkyard. But not many junkyards want them because they're not even worth the effort to, to recycle.